There's something seriously wrong with my sister. I've been sharing this post around the dark corners of the internet hoping someone out there has experienced something similar. So far, I've had no luck. Last week, my family got back from a five-day camping trip up in Oregon. That's out of state for us. The trip was great. There were relatively no problems and no physical injuries, or so I thought at the time. Toward the end of our vacation, my older sister Tanya kept complaining about the mosquitoes. She'd say at night that she'd been bitten up that day and asked my mom for the hydrocortisone cream she kept in her purse. I didn't say anything, but I thought it was particularly odd because I hadn't noticed any mosquitoes and certainly hadn't suffered any bites. The last trail we went on, Tanya claimed her bites were so bad that she slathered herself and off and reeked of insect repellent from anywhere within a 10-foot radius. Even so, she kept slapping at her arms and neck every now and then with a hiss and a wince. The day after we got back, Tanya was still scratching all over. Dad told her to stop scratching in case it was poison ivy or something similar. Tanya applied hydrocortisone cream to her arms and legs and neck, despite having no visible signs of a rash. There were no bumps or hives, just smooth, healthy skin. I chalked it up to an overactive imagination, especially considering Tanya's history of being a hypochondriac. The night we were both in the living room, reclined on the furniture and absentmindedly watching TV. Every now and then I'd look over and catch Tanya scratching herself. Red streaks were already starting to appear on her skin. Not from any particular ailment, just irritation from her own fingernails continuously raking in that area. Eventually, she got up and mumbled something about going to bed early. The next morning, my mom made French toast for breakfast. Tanya came sluggishly into the room with dark bags under her eyes, looking like she hadn't gotten a wink of sleep. She was wearing one of her sweaters, which I thought was strange considering the warm weather. The four of us, Mom, Dad, Tanya, and me, sipped on orange juice and ate while the TV droned in the background. I made a small comment about how one of her shirt sleeves had a jelly stain on it. Before she could open her mouth to respond, Mom had an instant realization and yanked Tanya's sleeve up her arm, revealing a forearm that was raw and bleeding. The skin that had last night been fair and clean was now shredded and cut and blistered. Scratch marks trailed across one and another like intersecting railroad tracks. Mom leapt up from the table with a hand over her mouth, looking like she wanted to vomit. She scolded Tanya for scratching so much, and didn't the anti-itch cream help? Tanya said it didn't, and the itching kept her up all night. That was the last straw. Mom said Tanya was going to have a doctor's appointment to get it looked at. Tanya hated the doctor, but agreed to go given the circumstances. If there was a rash, it wasn't visible, but was clearly very serious. Was it possible to have a rash under your skin? One which causes no welts or visible irritation? None of us were sure. Best to have a professional opinion. Tanya slathered more anti-itch cream on her arms and winced at the way it burned her cuts. That didn't stop her from scratching. That evening, she complained that the itching had spread to her back. The day after that, Tanya looked like someone had taken a whip to all visible parts of her body. Her skin was pink and clawed apart. It looked like she had spent the night dragging a comb through her flesh. Maybe she had. My parents scolded her for continuing to scratch and asked her how her skin was ever going to heal if she kept upsetting it. They were abrupt, purely from concern, but that didn't stop Tanya from breaking down and bawling into her hands, murmuring about how the itching would not stop no matter how hard she tried to refrain from scratching. The longest she could resist temptation was around 10 seconds. After that, the itching became too unbearable to ignore. Even as she cried, her fingernails raked back and forth on all parts of her body. Needless to say, Tanya stayed home that day. My parents debated taking her to the emergency room, but considering she had a doctor's appointment in two days and displayed no other symptoms of an allergic reaction, they decided it could wait. If she would simply stop scratching, they said, she would feel so much better. I wasn't so sure. 
When I got home from school, Tanya was spread out on the couch and looked nearly unrecognizable. Bleeding marks crisscrossed her exposed flesh. Her clothes were torn and ragged. Her fingernails had been whittled down to dull nubs from sheer overuse. Bits of her hair had been ripped out and lay on the floor beside her, matted with blood. She was shaking all over. I cursed under my breath. Tanya begged me to come closer, and I didn't. Please, she said. Please, please kill me. I grabbed at her wrist to try and restrain her from scratching, but she seemed immensely stronger than the sister I remembered. She swiped at me and her worn fingernails drew jagged marks through my skin. A little blood seeped out. After that, I gave her some space. I told her that it had been all in her head anyway, because there was no such thing as an invisible rash. She wouldn't hear it. It itches so much, she insisted. It itches deep down inside me. It itches. My parents and I ate a bland dinner by ourselves that evening, not saying much. Tanya had locked herself in her room and refused to come out for any reason, even when my mom came knocking twice with an offer to go to the emergency room. Go away! I look hideous! were the only words that floated through the door. After a while, she stopped saying anything at all, and the only noise that could be heard from her room was the faint sound of human skin being scraped and scraped and scraped. I woke up sharply at one in the morning, acutely aware that my bladder was about to burst. I fumbled through the hallway in the dark to find the restroom. On my way back, I could still hear scratching coming from Tanya's bedroom. Only now it was more coarse and somehow more wet. The scratching was slow and methodical, back and forth, back and forth. I paused at her door and gave a small knock. I apologized quietly for the previous day when I said it was all in her head because she obviously did have a problem. She'd get it looked at and the doctor would prescribe her something, maybe a topical cream or an antibiotic, and she'd be all right. I missed having her at dinner. To my dismay, there was still no response. She must have been pretty upset. I didn't blame her, all things considered. That was when I noticed her door was slightly ajar. She must have gotten up to use the restroom at some point and forgotten to lock it again. Tanya? I said as I pushed it open. But what I saw in the room wasn't Tanya. At least not the Tanya I remembered. The thing sitting on the edge of her bed had no skin at all. The moonlight streaming through the window illuminated the bright red body, shiny and raw and bleeding. Its anatomy was like those biology textbook depictions of human musculature. I could see tendons and muscles and veins all ragged, all torn. The figure was hunched, its arms cradling its body and scratching, and scratching, and scratching. It was facing away from me, but the head whipped around when I uttered a weak gasp. Yes, it was, or had been, Tanya. The face was missing its skin as well, but the structure was slightly recognizable. The cartilage of her nose had been scratched away, leaving an arrow-shaped hole in its place. One eye had been scratched out, but the other was round and intact. Her hair was mostly gone, and all that remained were patches and strands, but her smile, that was perhaps the worst part, and that part that will always remain with me, that smile was big and lipless and bore no resemblance to my sister at all. You could see every tooth, the clean white color contrasting greatly with the rest of her. That smile was not my sister's. I have to get out, she said to me, the muscle of her throat visibly working to form the words. The voice was not Tanya's. I have to get out of the shell that I'm in. What I now recognized to be strips of human flesh were littered around her like the shed hide of a snake. That was the last thing I saw before I slammed the door between us and stumbled violently down the hall. The world spinning before my eyes as I made it to my room and locked the door. 
The next several hours passed in a blur in which I seemed to drift between dream and reality, disassociating from what I'd seen and convincing myself it wasn't real because it couldn't be real. But when I at last left my room to meet my parents downstairs, I could still hear that awful scratching coming from Tanya's room, faint, but non-stop. Her doctor's appointment is today, but I have a feeling she isn't going to go. The door is locked again and she won't respond to either of my parents. It won't be long, I'm sure, until they try to break down the door, but who knows how much of Tanya will be left by then. It bothers me that Tanya isn't responding, though I doubt I'll ever attempt to communicate again. It bothers me that she's not itching after all, but molting some old version of herself away, only to be replaced with the Tanya that is not Tanya at all. It bothers me that she won't see a doctor, even though I'm certain there's nothing at all that a doctor could do. But what bothers me more than anything, I guess, is that I have an itch too, one that is constant and just below the skin. Okay, listeners, this has been another story from the subreddit No Sleep, a creepypasta written by the Paranormologist. I'll put a link to the original post in the description below. You'll remember the Paranormologist also supplied the story about I know what my cat sees when it stares at nothing. Such a great writer, and I'm so glad that you let me use this story. Thank you again, and I hope everybody enjoyed this creepypasta tonight. And I hope the next time you start itching and you start scratching that itch, don't worry too much. Most likely it's just a rash or a bug bite, right? Everybody have a good night. Sleep tight. And don't let the bed bugs bite.